Hello Techheads and welcome to this very quick video where I'm going to run through how to resolve quite a common uh, problem that uh, you may have experienced before or you may be experiencing at the, uh, at the moment when you go to add additional uh, local disk to an ESXi host. So you'll see I've got three disks outlined at the moment. I click on add storage, it's local disk, so I select the first option. And you'll see I've got a, um, a SAS disk uh, that I haven't allocated that's available to be uh, added to the ESXi host. So when I click next, I get this error message which says cannot change the host configuration. So it makes a call through um, of query VMFS data store create options and for that particular object and comes back failed. Now, there are multiple reasons why you may get this error message, but um, I'm going to show you how to get more information as to what the uh, what the error is. But uh, I've found in my experience, nine times out of ten, it generally comes down to being that the disk that you've um, that you're trying to add to the SXI host has previously been used, perhaps as a storage appliance, a server, or if it's in your home lab, for example, perhaps in a home PC or Mac or similar. Um, so it's already got uh, partition inf uh, information down on there, and basically it's out of scope for what vSphere is expecting to see. Uh, to obviously put its its um, its mark on there, as it were. So um, we're going to use two utilities here. The first one is the vSphere client. I'm using the um, the traditional vSphere client, but obviously the same would apply if you're using the web-based client uh, via vCenter or similar. Now we don't want to close this window because there's some very important information we want to um, gather. So. Each disk that's added into a host, the SXI host, has got a unique identifier. And in, in the instance of this particular disk, um, this is its unique identifier here. Now, what I normally do is take the last four or five numbers or digits uh, of the unique identifier, because that in the next step will help me identify the disk and then uh, run the command that will give me a little bit more information as to what the error is. So we can see here it ends in 9414. And now what I want to do is establish an SSH connection through to the SSH. SXI host to run the following commands. Now, by default, many of you already know, uh, SSH is disabled on the SXI host. Now, this is um, for security implications or reasons. So in a production environment, your SXI host should generally have your SSH disabled. But in lab environments where, you know, if, if you're you know messing around with the, your, um, your SXI host on a regular basis, uh, you may find that there it's already enabled. But either way, um, you've got to enable it via the, uh, the console window of the SXI. Um, so if you've got local access or remote access through to the host, you can do it via there. Now, if you don't know how to do this, do a search on my website, techhead.co. I've got a very uh, straightforward blog post there that will show you how to enable SSH on your SXI host in less than sort of 30 seconds or so. So it's very quick to do. Now, what I use to establish an SSH connection is use a utility called Putty. Now, if you haven't heard of Putty before, it's a free utility. If you're a Windows um, uh, based administrator or user, I highly recommend you download it. Like I say, it's free to download. Just do a Google for Putty. Uh, generally, it comes up first in the search results. Download it. But what it enables you to do is, uh, through a nice interface, um, uh, connect on through or establish an SSH connection through to the SXI host. You'll see here as well, there's various other connection types, that, uh, whether it be serial, telnet, or similar. So like you can see, quite a versatile little tool. Now, I'm going to enter the IP address of the ESXi host into this field here. So in this instance, 192.168.1.14. And there we go. So I've established a connection through. I'm going to log on as root. Um, if you're using a different password uh, or you've got a, a sort of a... Um, a root level or equivalent uh, password, you may be using that. But this is just in my, uh, in my uh, lab here, so uh, it's still at defaults. So there we go, I've logged on, I've established that SSH connection through, and I'm gonna run a command here. The first command I want to do is, uh, it's gonna show me a list of all the devices um, on the uh, ESXi host. So to do this, and uh, I recommend sort of taking a note of these commands, they're ones that I've always got written down uh, in my notebook. They've uh, come in useful many a time, especially when troubleshooting. Um, so, so ls minus lha, then vmfs, devices and then disks like so. As with everything that's command line, to remember it's uh, case sensitive. Okay, so this gives me a list of all the um, the disk devices here. And if you remember, the device that was giving us the or the, the disk device that was giving us the errors ended in 941, uh, 9414. So if we scroll on down here, 
have a look see there it is there 9414 don't see any other instances these are the other uh, disks that I've already got uh, established within the ESXi host um, you'll see there's two entries there 9414 and 9414 uh, colon 1 now the colon 1 uh, refers to a partition on that disk um, for, but for the commands we're going to be running here we don't need the colon 1 at all we just want the uh, unique identifier for that disk particular disk device so that was the first command that shows us gives us a list of all the uh, disk devices um, now the second one that we're going to run here will give us a little bit more of a clue as to what the uh, what the error is so this is a uh, parted util so get ptbl and once again I put the um, the path devices oh sorry so vmfs devices that's why it pays to uh, write these commands down disks and then um, I want to put the uh, unique ID of the uh, of the disk. Oh, here we go. So another reason for using PuTTY is very nice and easy for uh, copy and pasting data. Saves writing all that out and uh, fat fingering accidentally the uh, unique identifier, especially when you're dealing with that many digits. So we're going to run that command now. And what it brings back is a rather useful error message. It says, look, error. The primary GPT table state on the backup GPT is located beyond the end of the disk. This may happen if the disk is a shrunker partition table was corrupted. So it could be a number of things, like I said. But um, generally what it means is the disk um, has been used elsewhere. Perhaps it's one disk in, a, in an array. Um, obviously that, uh, that array or that stripe no longer exists on there. Um, or, or similar you know chances are it's been used perhaps in the in a pc or something similar so it's still got a petition down there uh gpt or otherwise in this case uh, gpt that's what it's talking about um that it's unable to um uh, handle or deal with so what we want to do here is um run a command that's uh, just going to put a basic MS-DOS partition over it, which will enable us within the uh, vSphere um, client to go back in and then allocate that disk. So we're going to overwrite uh, any of the issues um, that we have there. So once again, I'm going to run the uh, parted util, like you can see, a very useful, um, very useful uh, util at all. So ptbl like so, so uh, parted util set ptbl once again, uh, want to put the path in vmfs, or what I can do here, once again this is another joy of using putty, I'll just copy all of this, copy and then paste it down there, saves typing it all out. Okay, so I'm going to run this command, okay that didn't work, now reason that didn't work, there's a switch I wanted to put at the end, which is, says msdos, so we're going to run that command again, there we go, and that has now run. So, just to confirm, three commands. The first one we ran um, basically listed the devices or disks. Not entirely necessary, but it's good to uh, just to double check that you can actually see the disk there. I recommend doing that. The second command we ran gave us this valuable information as to what the issue is, and really confirms that uh, you know it's to do with um, a uh, incompatible partition or similar uh, written down onto that disk already. And the third one shows how we just uh, you know wipe that partition um, and uh, just just. Um, overlay a basic MS-DOS partition onto it. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to minimize uh, PuTTY at this point. So what I'll do is I'll uh, cancel out of here. I'll go back in to add the storage. Disk LUN, like so. Select my uh, SAS disk. I mean, that could be a SATA disk, SSD, or similar. And you, you'll notice it can be created and used. And here we go. So we didn't get to this point last time. So, um, so I'll call this SAS02. I already have a SAS disk in there maximum available space and away we go there we go so we didn't get that error message at all and here it is it's uh, creating that vmfs data store and allocating it to the esxi host so there we go that's all added and let's have a look there's the data store there well, let's create a, uh, a test folder in there there we go there it is we'll just delete it again like so. So there we go. So I hope you found this video useful. Um, like I say, it could be a number of issues. Do your due diligence first. Um, definitely run that command where it gives you the error message before you go doing anything. Um, but like I say, nine times out of ten, it's generally when a disk has been reused uh, from somewhere else. So thanks for watching. Hope you found this useful and um, watch out for uh, other videos. Thanks very much.